Welcome to Voice of the Inland Empire, your weekly adventure into the who, what, where, and why of our Southern California communities. And we are coming to you from Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland on 2nd Street, just north of the gazebo and a little bit east of Euclid. And we are here at Charlie's Bar where today we're going to be meeting two individuals who are involved in the vape industry, e-cigarettes, e-liquids. And we're going to be talking to Alex Hards who owns Sweet Nectar Liquids. He's a domestic company that produces the liquids for these vapes or these e-cigarettes and distributes internationally. And we're also going to chat with Dan Flanagan who is a store owner, a vape store owner of Sunset Vape Shop. And we're going to find out the reality of why this is such an incredible growing phenomenon. And check out our website at voiceoftheinlandempire.com for all the times and places our show can be seen. So don't go away, we will be right back. Hi, this is Corey Chalmers, host of the TV show Hoarders and president of Sterically Inc. 5% of the population suffers from hoarding behaviors. Are you or a loved one overwhelmed with clutter? If so, let our caring and compassionate specialists support you every step of the way, drama free. Give us a call at 1-800-HOARDERS for a free estimate or visit hoarders.com. Stericlean has offices nationwide to assist you. Please call us at 1-800-HOARDERS. That's 1-800-462-7337. Is your radio station dull? Boring? More of just the same day after day after? Then it's time for radio that will blow your mind and expand and enlighten it too. KCAA Radio, 1050 AM, is not only the go-to radio station for what's happening in and around the Inland Empire, it's a veritable cornucopia of crazy, an assemblage of awesome, and a total convergence of cool. KCAA is not only the NBC News affiliate for our area, but offers the broadest and craziest range of national and local radio in the Inland Empire, with shows like I Miss in the Morning, Dave Ramsey, Joyce Riley's Power Hour, Controlled Chaos, Poor Man, and now Voice of the Inland Empire with yours truly. Check out 1050 AM at home or on the road, or you risk being the only one at work not talking about the fun, crazy, educational, outlandish, awesome things they heard on KCAA 1050 AM. And you wouldn't want that, right? It is that time of the show when we say hello to today's guest and we are joined by Alex Hards who is the owner of Sweet Nectar E-Liquids. What are E-Liquids? Well, if you were from the younger group, you wouldn't be asking that question. But for those of you that are, let's find out. Alex, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Ron. So, as you and I both know, those are the liquids that go in vapes. Yeah. Uh, which have become just incredibly popular. I know when they first started, a lot of people were going, ah, just a fad, it's going to disappear. I don't know that it's even a long-term fad. I'm thinking it may be a permanent entity. And you make the liquids that go in the vapes, and I've known you for a while, and there is so much conflicting information. Is it good for you? Is it not good for you? Is it bad for you? Or some oils from overseas not good? Or the Educate me. What's the <laughs> reality behind the liquids and vaping? Okay. Well, the vape industry is fairly new, definitely. Um, there's two different types of liquids. There's liquids that come from China and there's American-made liquids. The difference is, is American-made liquids have USP grade vegetable glycerin and vegetable glycerin is basically a liquid sugar. Um, propylene glycol, nicotine, and flavorings that you would use in like candies or drink flavorings and things like that. Now are you guys overseen by any federal entities or this is just kind of the standards for US made uh, liquids? Uh, actually at this time there is no regulation on it but really with vape shops they're very particular on who they choose so you kind of have to have that standard it's weird because or they we, won't buy it exactly we've okay. kind of created our own standards based on the market having so many liquids 
that now they're able to pick and choose and they can pick the best products. Because we've heard for a long time and continue to hear that some of the offshore liquids are full of all kinds of nasty stuff. Uh, yes, uh, it's called decaying. And uh, the thing about decaying is it's an made from animal fats. So the glycol, which is the sugar, is made from animal fats. And honestly, there's no regulation over there like here. But the problem is, is we tend to care a little bit more about our stuff. We're not mass produced. A lot of the e-liquid manufacturers are smaller. And you kind of from city to city of different manufacturers. So we tend to take a little bit more pride and care a little bit more about what goes in our liquid. All right, so let's move the conversation now to using liquids that are just domestically made. Okay. I think there's very little argument that vaping is healthier or not as harmful as cigarettes. I think everyone kind of agrees across the board on that because yeah. it's got all the carcinogens and the garbage that are in cigarettes gone. Exactly. And you can get it with or without nicotine or exactly. varying levels of nicotine. But beyond that, there's still controversy about is it purely healthy or purely okay or we just don't know yet. Definitely. So with that, I would say Europe is the best place to kind of get your research because Europe has been doing this way longer than we have. They've been... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So this has been a, a, a surge in Europe for a long time now. Close to 15 years, actually. Really? Yeah. And it just now made its way over here. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, Europe has long-term studies. They've done seven to 12 year studies. And it is shown that uh, vaping tends to be 97% better than traditional cigarettes. And also, Vaping does create the sensation, but you change your muscle memory. So instead of smoking a cigarette like this, you're actually pushing a button and changing your muscle memory, which in turn rewires your brain so you're not craving Well, for much. someone who wants to use this to get off of cigarettes, I don't think there's even a doctor anywhere who would say <laughs> it's a bad thing. I have a dear friend that I got involved in vaping and it got her completely off cigarettes. And she started, as many do, with the nicotine base, the higher levels, and then cut down, and now does the lowest levels and sometimes none. But it's not really the nicotine so much that's bad for you, as opposed to what's in a cigarette. Exactly. Nicotine has uh, been proven to be no more um, harmful for you than, say, caffeine. It uh, constricts your blood flow. It does do that, but so does caffeine. So with that issue, yeah, I mean, people think nicotine is the worst thing in a cigarette. It's actually the least harmful thing in a cigarette. Right. It's all the carcinogens and just the, the byproducts exactly. that are so bad. All right. The smoke, or I guess the better term, vapor, vapor. that comes off <laughs> of these. Uh, not secondhand smoke, bad, like cigarettes. Uh, harmless? Uh, yes, it is. Actually, all the nicotine that is in the product, once you inhale, you do not exhale any nicotine. So there's no such thing as secondhand smoke. I mean, we don't condone smoking or vaping even around children. I mean, come on, use your discretion. But I mean, if someone were to do that, it wouldn't be harmful. Okay, so nothing, because I know initially when they came out, a lot of bars and restaurants were allowing you to vape, and I believe still do. Uh, because the whole no smoking thing was about the secondhand smoke, which everyone knows is harmful, and and this isn't. Yes. So that's another benefit of of the of the these e-cigs or or vaping. Exactly. Um, the nice part about vaping is also the smell. I mean, I used to be a smoker, and my clothes used to reek. And I mean, I'm young, so when you go on dates, you don't want to smell like an ashtray. Nice part is, is you don't want to taste like one when you kiss exactly. either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is not a good part either. <laughs> now, the other thing, when they first came out, and these were mostly the offshore ones, they looked like metal cigarettes, literally. Yes. Then they evolved and they were in, this is what I have, is one of the long tube ones. Okay. And now they're in all different sizes and shapes. What's with that? Okay, so there now is different types. Uh, the vape industry has actually changed drastically in the last year. Um, it started with mechanicals, which is more of a, think of it like a flashlight. When you push the button on the flashlight, the light turns mm -hmm. on. Well, with the mechanical vapes, it was the same thing. You would connect a circuit, and when you would push the button, 
That's what I have. It creates the heat, exactly. high intensity, which turns the liquid into vapor, and then you, you take a puff. Exactly. And now we have things called variable voltage. And what that is, is it's basically a, almost like your smartphone. It can, you can control it, you can turn up and you can turn down how much smoke production you would like. You can also change your wattage. So say you would like to have a more rough, rough inhale, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. Then you would turn the wattage up so it would hit more like a cigarette. So you wouldn't take as long of an inhale but then you would get more of an effect, exactly. more immediate effect. And say you'd like to blow larger clouds like you're hanging out with your Well, friends. that's what everyone nowadays, <laughs> when I first started doing this, we all had just those pins, the mechanical exactly. ones. Exactly. You know, you got a puff. It looked like about a puff from a cigarette. Yeah. And now people walk around looking like choo-choo trains. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you this, want to. They take a hit and it's like this rain cloud is following them. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, if they, you're able to control that now. So say you're out and about with friends, you're walking down the street, you don't want to offend people, you can turn up your wattage, take a smaller hit, and still get your sensation of the cigarette, still get your nicotine, but you're not blowing those crazy clouds. And say you're hanging out with your buddies and you just want to blow big clouds. Some people like to do that. Yeah. Sometimes I like to do that. You can turn down the wattage and then blow bigger clouds. That's funny. Now, Alex, if someone wants to get more information from you about where they can find your product or just ask questions about these e-liquids, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, best place would either be our website, sweetnectarjuice.com, or our Instagram, which would be Sweet Nectar e liquids, or even our Facebook, Sweet Nectar Juice. So. All right. And if you miss that, visit our website, voiceoftheinlandempire.com. Drop me an email and I'll be happy to connect you and Alex. Alex, thank you so much for joining us and we're gonna meet uh, your counterpart in the next segment. Awesome. So until then, cheers. Chantani. If you can think it, we can ink it at Pada Sun Print Shop. From embroidery to printing to signs, banners, t shirts, that's what we do. Anything that you can imagine at Patterson Print Shop, we make it happen. If you can think it, we can ink it at Pada Sun Print Shop. Call us today at 951 924 2332 or visit pattersonprintshop.org. Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland is one of my favorite places to go for food, for drink, and for great entertainment. Located at 296 2nd Street in Old Town Upland, just north of the gazebo and just east of Euclid Avenue. This is a wonderful place with a broad menu, variety, great drinks, great fun, and marvelous people. They have weekly specials. These are my favorites. Check out their Monday night $5.99 steak dinner. How can you go wrong? They have specials virtually every night of the week. And then they have entertainment going on all the time from trivia contests to karaoke to dancing to some of the best cover bands you'll ever hear on Fridays and Saturday nights. Check them out on Yelp. Check them out on Facebook or come on by and say you heard about them on Voice of the Inland Empire. I love it so much here. This is where we're shooting the show, right here from the bar at Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland. Come on by any evening. Who knows, you may just see me here having dinner and a drink. We are back and coming to you from Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland, one of my favorite places in the world. And here at the bar, we just met and chatted with Alex Hards about the vape industry and how it's evolved and about so many of the myths and misinformation about smoking e-cigs and the liquids. We are now joined by a new friend, Dan Flanagan, who is the owner of Sunset Vape, 
And Dan, you know, we had someone that manufactures liquids, Alex, and sells and distributes them. Yes. Educate us on that. But you're, you're out there in the field. He's out in some science place, someplace, making this liquid. <laughs> you're, you're talking every day with the people that vape and that, and that smoke these e-cigarettes. What, what happened? Why did it become so popular so quick? When it started, so many people thought it was a temporary fad, and it seems anything but temporary. Well, I think it's a great question, Ron, and I think that really goes into the whole community aspect of vaping, and which is a huge aspect of vaping. I mean, you have a, a whole thing where there's people just trying to do a healthier alternative, and they... To smoking, to cigarettes. To smoking, and mm -hmm. that's why they decide to get into the vaping aspect, of, which is what got most of us into it. But once you get into it, you realize it's much, much broader than that. It's much huger than that. It's a whole community of people that are out there. You know, it's passionate. interesting you say that, community, because there is not a community of smokers, no. per se. No. Now, if you step outside of a bar to have a smoke, yeah, you're going to chat get with a little some people. Conversation. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. But this goes beyond that. I mean, there are, there's a place right here in Old Town where you can go to just sit with other folks and sit around and hang and talk and chat and vape. Oh yeah, that, I mean that's, that's what's so awesome with vaping and that's what we really want to drive to people too, that we aren't the big industries that people think of and people are associated with big tobacco and things like that. I mean, we're just little mom and pop people and we just enjoy the community of it just like anyone else and that's what really drives the passion of it, is working with the community, being part of that community and I mean that's what really makes vaping what it is to me and that's what really makes me passionate about doing what I do with it. That is awesome. Now when this first came to market what we saw were metal things that looked like metal cigarettes. Yes. And then they've slowly evolved. They went to these long thin cylinders which actually is what I own and, and they've continued to evolve and I see you've got a whole bunch of hardware here. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what we're looking at. So I brought just a little bit of, and this is just a little bit, because I mean, when you're talking vape, there's thousands of customizations out there. I mean, the sky's the limit with it. So this is a very, very small broad of it. But I just wanted to kind of show how the evolution of vaping went. And from two years ago, from when I started vaping, you had uh, these almost pen-like looking units. Mm -hmm. You had an odd cylinder on top of it that housed liquid. And that's essentially where the vaporization happens from the circuit of the battery being operated. And so I mean, you'd push they, a button, it would create extreme heat, turn the liquid into vapor, and you'd take a puff. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, they were fine. They are what got me off of cigarettes, and they are what started me on this whole venture of vaping. But the drawback with them is they just didn't have the output. I mean, the, people, including myself, when you use them, you like them, you understand what they're trying to do, but it just didn't quite mimic it completely of what you were trying to achieve of switching from a traditional cigarette. And now when you get into vaping, it's, it's a whole So what whole are some of world. these other items in it? And, and how has the hardware changed? It's so, not so much electric now, but it's more variable? It's more variable. So when you say, when I say variable, that's going to be more of like this unit here or this unit. They come in more of a box form and that's going to house the battery. But the biggest thing with these is going to be the input you're allowed to adjust on. Oh my so gosh, just there's an the, LCD screen on this thing. And this is just the start. The next ones are actually going to look like a full on cell phone, I hear from the emails I'm receiving. But Basically what makes these such a dream compared to those is now you can actually turn the wattage exactly to your comfort level. So me, someone who's been doing it for a long time, I'm a vape owner, I might use it a little bit higher. I, you know, I'm a little bit more used to it, a little bit more prone to it. But someone who wants to start it for the first time, like how you said in a bar type setting, mm -hmm. you might run into somebody and they want to try it. If I show them this at full power, it might kind of it'll blow uh, them away. It'll, it'll intimidate them. It'll blow them away. Hey, the, that's cool and all, but uh, I don't know if I'm willing you know, to get or into that. What's nice is if you're, you know, where there's a lot of people and you don't want to make a lot of smoke, but still kind of enjoy it, you can turn it down. So you can control it based on your wants and on the, the needs at the time. Exactly. And that's something that I do very, very often because I overheard you and Alex speaking earlier in the last segment. 
And you guys kind of touched on how uh, bars in the industry has kind of changed on that. I'm really familiar with that because we actually host a lot of events that we do at bars. And the main thing I hear from them and I see at concert venues and stuff like that is the output that comes out will mm-hmm. actually be a distraction as well. So it's not just so much is what's going into it and the unknown of that because, mm-hmm. I mean, with smell you can kind of affirm that. But it's going to be a lot to do with the actual seeing it. And mm-hmm. that's kind of off And how big of a yeah. cloud you're going to create. So with now, this you can turn it up and down wherever your liking is. I love that. Now we're almost out of time. So uh-huh. I want to talk about... Out, there's some um, legislation that's yes. coming out. Tell the us about that. The huge one that I uh, really wanted to touch on would be the HR 2058 that's coming into proposal right now. And the main thing what they're trying to, what we're trying to achieve with that is we really want voters to get out there and support it because what that's going to allow us to do is vapors in our with our community is keep our community because what that bill does is it grandfathers whatever's on the market to stay on the market so that way we can further do these research studies that other European well, countries have done. Well, what's the purpose done. of this bill overall? The purpose of this bill, what it's trying to accomplish is everything at the mar- on the vaping market is gone unless it was made 2007 or prior. And now you're talking about this. So anyone who and you got... And what's the rationale behind that? The rationale behind it what, is... What do they claim it is? The proponents of this bill? I see very little to none because their opponents to the bill is they're saying that it's the output, it's all these unknown variables and all that. But if they really want to do an educated research and study on it, then they really need to be studying what consumers mm-hmm. use. And that's not these anymore, mm-hmm. and that's these. Mm-hmm. I can tell you as a shop owner, I mean, every day I'm selling tens, twenties of these versus uh, this same unit I actually brought from the shop because it's been sitting there for about six months mm-hmm. and it's the last one. So that just goes to show you where the actual consumer, it, it allows them to make their decision and make their choice and where their money's being spent at. Okay. So, and then we haven't talked about this and maybe this is a good segue. Someone is saying, you know, this sounds good. You know, I want to get off cigarettes or just vaping sounds like, you know, something I might enjoy. You know, what, what's involved in getting started? Getting started, you really just need the what's going to house the battery, what's going to house the liquid, and what's going to charge the units. And a lot of kits are coming fully complete with all those stuff in it, with everything you need to know how to use it. And that's starting as low as $50 and getting up to about $99. You can, okay, you can, you can average from there. All right. Yeah. Well, listen, before we, we wrap up, if someone wants more information on vaping, on your store, Sunset Vape Shop, I know also you have your own line of liquids, or on this legislation, how do they get a hold of you? Um, if you want to learn more about the shop or the legislation, you can see me at sunsetvapeshop.com, and then on the e-juice end, we uh, do everything with unanimousvapors.com. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank and you educating for us on your industry. Don't go away. We still have more yet to come. Hi, I'm Jennifer Ewan, and I do the hair and makeup for Ron Stark and his guests. I would like to make you look and feel like a star all of the time. Come meet me at Studio M Salon and Spa in Upland. And if you mention this show, you can receive a free consultation and half off a haircut. I offer the best in makeup and formal styles for weddings, proms, and all of your special occasions, including special effects makeup, hairstyling, cutting, and color, hair and eyelash extensions, facials, and body treatments. So if you want to look and feel like a star, come see me at Studio M Salon and Spa in Upland. Give me a call today for your free consultation and half off a haircut at 626-589-3475 or 909-981-6800. The Citizens Business Bank Arena is truly one of my favorite places to go. Whether it's for a concert, a sporting event, or some sort of live performance, it's so close, it's beautiful, it's comfortable, and my favorite part is the parking is easy in and out. 
Now, two of my favorite things are going on right now. And let's check the clipboard and let me tell you a little bit about them. The Ontario Rain is in the middle of their season. Tickets are on sale. If you love ice hockey, in my opinion, this is some of the best. And the Rain are coming off of a winning season. So check them out. Go to OntarioRain.com or give them a call at 909-941-7825. My very favorite is the Ontario Fury indoor soccer team. Last year we made it to the playoffs in only our second year and we're well on our way to making it again. Tickets are on sale, check them out at OntarioFury.com or call 909-457-0252. February 16th, WWE Smackdown is coming to the arena. On the 20th of February, who doesn't like the Harlem Globetrotters? Great family fun for everyone. And on February 23rd, Hillsong United Empire's 2016 tour. They're an Australian-based worship group and worth checking out. You can learn about all of this and more by checking out their website, cbbankarena.com, and I'll see you at the arena. If you can think it, we can ink it at Pada Sun Print Shop. From embroidery to printing to signs, banners, t shirts, that's what we do. Anything that you can imagine at Patterson Print Shop, we make it happen. If you can think it, we can ink it at Pada Sun Print Shop. Call us today at 951 924 2332 or visit pattersonprintshop.org. What a great show. I so enjoyed chatting with our guest and thank you for tuning in and joining us. And please remember, set your DVRs so you never miss another episode of Voice of the Inland Empire. Or want to be able to watch the show 24-7? Then visit our website at voiceoftheinlandempire.com. On the homepage, you'll find the most current shows. And if you click on archives, you'll find several years of past shows all of them fun and interesting to watch. And while you're on our website, drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Thoughts, ideas, suggestions. If you have an idea for a show guest, let us know. Our guests need to have topics of broad general interest and be non-commercial in nature. If you prefer the more traditional way of reaching us, you can call our telephone hotline at 909-746-8846. So, this is Ron Stark reminding you to be productive, care for your world and the people around you, work hard, find time for fun, but always remember to give back whatever and whenever you can. Until next time, goodbye for now. <laughs>